Hi everyone, I'm Lenny from Urban Automotive and this is my 21 model year E-Class Coupe. I got this in March last year and there weren't really that many components, modification parts available for it because it was such a new model. I waited for months and months and months for someone to come out with something, never happened. I work for Urban Automotive, we're one of the best modification centres in the UK. So why not approach the boss and see if he'll make one for me. So this is the story about how I managed to get a one-of-one one carbon fibre part for my car made by Urban Automotive. First step though, convincing the boss to get it done for me. So last week, it seems that I've made a bit of a mistake. Um, I actually said to him that yes, we could do some development time, yes, we could scan his car if he paid for a 3D printed front splitter. And he's actually said yes. That's not a mistake. That isn't a mistake. That's A, helping you mate out. But B, I was calling your bluff. Oh, no, I was calling no, no, your bluff. No, look, look we, got, we get comments all the time. It's very, very 50-50. Some people like the us messing about the cars, and some yeah. people genuinely like the R&D and the development and stuff. So I thought this would be quite a nice little story. Basically, my car is a E-Class Coupe, but it's a facelift. And you don't see many, I haven't seen many, and because it's a facelift, it's only been out for a year and a bit, but no one has developed any parts for it yet. No, I've... but when I said, if I, we'll scan it and we'll do a front splitter for it, I didn't expect you to say yes, that you would pay for a 3D. No, I absolutely will, because I've been waiting a year and a half for someone to bring a splitter out, and what better than making my own splitter? With... Is this the I bit where you for call a... out and you say, can, anyway, can no. anyone who's got a large flatbed 3D printer <laughs> right. for promotional work, I'll do your 3D, uh, 3D that's a, print Actually, for that's a good shout, because I, I don't mind paying for the, like, the, the scanning and the tooling and the design, but I need someone to be able to print this out in one piece for me. So if you've got a 3D scanner that you think a is going to be- 3D printer. 3D printer, sorry, that is going to be long enough to print out a, a splitter. Yeah, um, it's going to be, you know, a, an inch and a half high, by probably, I'm, I'm talking in inches, but it's probably going to be about 20 centimetres high and about, what, two metres wide is yeah, the car? Yeah. So yeah, if you've got a flatbed 3D printer that will print a splitter in one hit, that's yeah. what anyone wants to do. That's exactly it. So I've obviously lowered the car, I've put it on Vossens, I've done a few bits to it, but no one has, has, actually makes any parts for the front the yet because it's so, so you. Really no, exactly yeah. that. Yeah. Now it looks quite aggressive. I just need that, that little splitter. And yeah, I'm excited. I think it's, it's nice. I'll be able to speak to our designer and say like, what, you know, how- And this uh, is where your third video will get the most amount of views in front of everything else that we've done. We've been doing really well lately though. Content has been good. I think so. I like to think views so. Views have yeah. been really good. Yeah, yeah. Engagement's really been, been really good. Lots of nice comments. So we just keep- So we're, we're just, really happy. We just keep it moving. I got eight and a half hours sleep last night, guys. So yeah, look how I literally I am bubbly, although I've got a bit of a list because I've got this invisible yeah. thing in. So shall so. we go and have a look Excuse at my car me. and see where, the, yeah, where they are? Are we going to get it on the ramp? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, there have been some parts developed for the car. So this is a Pan America style front grille, which I changed. Um, I think the springs that I've lowered it on are the same as the pre-face lift. The wheels are obviously made by Vossen, so they're made for the car. There's a lip spoiler uh, by Maxton Design, who are obviously really good with splitters and add-on bits like that, but they haven't developed one yet, and there's no sign of it coming soon. And I'm impatient, so that's why I want to do it. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. One of one. One of one. Yeah, well, that's, that's why I wanted to document it and cycle in my bluff, like, I, I want to pay for it because it's, it's, it's going to be a cool thing. It's the one thing that's going to finish off my car. Please remember that in last week's video, it was Simon who said he didn't like my calicas with my new wheels. I love them. So I had so many messages over the weekend, people telling me what colour I should have the calipers, when in reality, I'm more than happy I'm with the colour of my car. now. <laughs> really happy with the look of my car now. Is he getting his hands Yeah, all good, mate. You can take her back now. Oh, that's slippy. Yeah, those back jumps under. Yeah. Uh, it's not going to go underneath there, mate. No. You'd have to come back. It slipped forward. Go down again. Is this the thing that we unboxed the other day, like 26 grand or something? Wait there. Go on. Front raises. What's going on? Go on, go on. No! <laughs> Basically, because he's got to get it up off the floor, he's got to get up onto the, the, the ramps in one hit. Uh, 
Uh, that, that was nearly there. Go on. A little bit more. Go Um, you shot both of those through. <laughs> they literally both shot through. I don't want a splitter now. I'm happy. Let's just get it out. Let's oh, just you've split, got a splitter. Just... Split tire. You've got your control. Is it hot in there? It's not. It shouldn't be. 24 degrees, Lenny. It was cold this morning, mate. He probably had a sun. He, he probably had a sunbed. He's used to the used to the heat. <laughs> Weren't they supposed to turn into a serious? This was meant to be a serious <laughs> R&D, what we're yeah. doing. Oh, yeah, you, they're all underneath the car. You've got to start again, mate. Wait there. you got the other one, Mark. Will the front one stay in the same place, yeah? You got it? The front, need the front a bit further back. The, no, 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 no. Because, no. About there. No, it's got to be oh, underneath be, the, wheel be the wheel now. That's it. Yeah. All right. All good. Yeah, you've got you've got to basically get up in the air on the first hit. Give it some, man. Lit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Near the end. This is what happens when you get a low car cut. How exactly. looks cool though, doesn't it? Looks cool though, doesn't it? Looks cool. <laughs> but it doesn't look cool at the minute. Maybe I should get air ride. What? Is there a trigger? Wait for that to load up. It looks like Johnny Five from, from Short Circuit. Do you remember that? Wally. Uh, it could be Wally, yeah. It could, well, it's a Wally holding it. That's well like Wally. That's well like Wally. <laughs> don't look in the camera. I don't want to scan your head. Boom, boom, boom. 3D printed letters. Oh my God. Basically, they sell them in the shop. They're like Lego heads. <laughs> Sorry, mate. This was meant to be. I said before we started filming, you just can't help yourself. I said, look, he, we've been messing about the he last actually, few weeks. He pulled me to he pulled me to one side and he said, so can we just be serious about this? It's my car, it's my splitter. But I genuinely think people will be he interested. Said, Don't be stupid and all of the rest of it. I genuinely think people will be interested. No, 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 no this, because this is interesting because we're actually making a unique one of one part. Yeah, I know, and we're gonna end up making it out of MDF. Right. There's stuff on it, yeah. Oh, look, yeah. that's what we've scanned before. We look like we know what, new, what we're doing. Projects. Right, OK. Yeah. You might want to speed this little bit up, man. <laughs> oh, no, oh, no, there, no, you, there go. you go. Right, OK. I did that for you. Now you've got to use the spray because basically the... Is that what you used on your hair? <laughs> <laughs> look, at, <laughs> oh, look at Mr. Eight and a half hours sleep, all lively, like bats, bats, bats. Got got loads loads of of sleep like, to be... I don't know where I told you that before, but I've got loads of sleep. Right, okay. Right, so the light bounces off of the gloss, basically, and it doesn't pick it up very well. So you yeah. need to... You right. could scan it, but obviously, the, like, the great... It's the great... What is it? The resolution? It's not... So, like, gloss are the two worst things to scan. All right, okay. So that's why we have to make it dirty. And you say this just comes off, does it? In about a week. Oh, Mike, you're using your camera. It's the white spray paint. Why are you paying? You know what you could do if you want to keep the cost down, Lenny? You not could, do it. No. <laughs> just, just not bother. No, you could, put, you could put a front canard on, which came up with this, which should actually be... I've got the more serious director on the phone. Hi, Chris. I'm, I'm literally, he's, he's probably I'm literally just about what to... What the F in hell is your car doing I, on the ramp? Yeah, we, yeah, we can do it in carbon, Chris. Yeah, that'd be great if we could do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> look on Simon's, the look on Simon's face when I said that. <laughs> well, I thought it was going to be like 3D print or plastic. No, no, no. We'll do... Oh, well, I said, I said, oh, no, Chris was, thinks it should be in carbon. Yeah. Why? Yeah. If, it, we're, it, if not, we're doing that, it, we'll have to do the side seals as well. I don't even... There's only one of these in the country and you own it. How happy is to get the full R&D 
Chris. This is R&D, Chris, this is good. <laughs> Actually, like, it doesn't have to be exposed carbon, does it? Like, it could, we could do it gloss black. What the, what the, make it made in the most effective way, exactly that. That's what I think. No, I, I completely agree with Chris. Yeah. I, I you're agree. only agreeing because you think you're going to get it for free now and you don't no, have to pay I'm, for the 3D print. I'm happy to pay. It's, I'm what? happy to pay. But what it's I'm saying good. is, I think putting carbon a carbon Where fiber splitter he? on a 196 brake force power diesel is probably a little bit over the top. But we can make it in carbon, but paint it gloss black, couldn't we? Yeah, about three and a half grand. Is he, is, he, is he on the phone to his mum? <laughs> is it not even Chris? See, this is why Chris is my favourite out of the two urban directors. Like, he's like, no, okay, well, you know, it's, it's, it's more about the process. And it's more about like, you know, we can make that carbon, we could do this, we could do that. Whereas you're just rolling, you should sit like stop size, size waving eyes. Waving the 26 <laughs> grand scanner around. Size eyes are literally rolling out of his head with him rolling his eyes so much. Yeah, Good. Hold on. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> right, am I going to get fired now? No. Right, okay. Are we? Yeah, yep. go for it. Can you speed this up, Alex? Do I keep my finger on the button? No. Oh. <laughs> oh, there, right, okay. We're Ready good. to there scan. Go. Yeah. No, you've got to, it's got to be green. Ah. Yeah, so just click it. Yeah. Yeah. You can do distance. When it's green is the best distance. Then you just press the button and go. You've got to press the button, Lenny. Yeah. Right. That's it, it's collecting data now. So as you go around, so you, you will have missed a bit there, but then you've got to go around the corner so you make sure that we get the return. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably a little bit far away, a little bit too close, that's it. And then you want to get in the gap so you make sure, oh, that mother's got my finger. Now go around there and get in, seeing that angle up there. No, you're too clip, you're too near, that's yeah. it. There you go. And you need to make sure that you get the fittings underneath. I don't want to get my finger in the scan, but so I need to make but sure. as long as it's green? Yeah, as long as it's green, it's going to collect all the data. So red, you're too near. You used to barbells, mate. Can you not hold that up? Is it like... It's actually quite heavy, isn't it? You've got to press the button, Lenny. Yeah. Right. That's it, it's collecting data now. So as you go around, so you, you will have missed a bit there, but then you've got to go around the corner so you make sure that we get the return. Yeah? Yeah, you're probably a little bit far away, a little bit too close, that's it. And then you want to get in the gap so you make sure, oh, that mother got my finger. Now go around there and get in, seeing that angle up there? No, you're oh. too clip, you're too near, that's yeah. it. there you go. And you need to make sure that you get the fittings underneath. I don't want to get my finger in the scan, but so I need to make but sure. as long as it's green? Yeah, as long as it's green, it's going to collect all the data. So red, you're too near. You used to barbells, mate. Can you not hold that up? Is it like... <laughs> it's actually quite heavy, isn't it? <laughs> this is, this good is good. No, it's good. It's, good. it's interesting. Not, you know, like the scan in my own cup. Why are you giggling? Literally, I'll try. But I said the first thing I said, I was like, I was gonna, we're going to do like a, an interesting R and D. I'm actually getting involved with R and D, and all I'm getting is like one gym. day I, we might scan you just for the back. I think that would be absolutely amazing. Or little little three D letters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There was a time when you would try, would have tried to Yeah, the Lenny like, Geezer days, yeah. I haven't said that. But, but, <laughs> little 3D Lenny. That, that stuff used to pay for the, the right goods in your house. The, yeah. In short, Lenny's had a little play and Justin's making it good. Just making sure it's right. Yeah. I wouldn't say a little play. I've done my bit and then the professionals. Did you enjoy that? It was really, like, it's, it's interesting. It's genuinely interesting. It's funny how it's become it's more issue interesting. It's issue backpedalling. Because up until it's now, he's been like, no, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. Because it's my car. Yeah. I'm, I'm selfish. There was one comment last good, week, which I sort of took on board. Someone actually said, Sai, you need to do the R&D on your own because Lenny's not interested. And, and basically, it's sort and of gone, it's gone too far now. But I'm really impressed with the fact that you're taking this on board. Thank and, you taking things seriously. I've taken this whole vlog no, very it, it was seriously. No, it was my idea to, it was my idea to make this about the R&D for the 50% of people who actually like this sort of stuff. So and it I'm wasn't, genuine, it wasn't your interested. idea to make it about R&D because it's your car then? Maybe no? a little bit of that, yeah, yeah maybe a little so. bit of that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've got the title for this week's video, Lenny is Selfish. That should pull, that should pull viewers in, yeah? 
title for the next video, Full Carbon Kit on an E-Class <laughs> Coupe. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, this has been a really fun episode. Yeah. We got it. Yeah, there you go. Oh, right, can That's I get the side tilt out of it as well? Can I take all this off now? What was that, Lenny Mirror cow? <laughs> yes! Roof light like bar! <laughs> <laughs> so that was the first step, getting the front of the car scanned. That scan data goes to the 3D designer and we start to bring it up on screen and get some ideas of how we want it to look. This is the exciting part. Got the design boxed off. I grab Reese, the manufacturing director, and we head over to see the mould getting made. So I'm just with Christopher, our um, operations director. And uh, before this video goes out, we obviously sent a draft to Chris, our, our technical man, um, just to make sure that all the technical terms, etc., were correct. And uh, we have found that. I've been explaining things wrong and um, I've got quite a few things wrong. So it kind of feels like I've been brought down to the um, uh, headmaster's office to be to be told off. You have. So there's a difference between a pattern and a mould in carbon composites, isn't there? There is, Lenny. What, what do you think the difference is? You even drew round what was a pattern the like, other day. I like, I like to think that I have learned something through this process. I, I thought you did, like literally ruined it for me. I thought I felt quite proud. Can you explain the difference between a pattern? I'm and so a, disappointed. Yeah. Really am. So a pattern is what you start with. So that's the master pattern as it's referred to. You kept calling the pattern the mould. Which in turn makes me look stupid. So you're obviously not stupid. You know, you, um, you're, yeah. So you start with the pattern, you make a mould off of the pattern, and then you're left with a mould. And that is your mould where you mm. take your part from. Do you get that? Yep. Roll the tape. <laughs> One button, you're asking me how can you, if I can use a GoPro, you're joking. <laughs> is it on now, is it? It is on, it is on. I'm scared of technology, you see. You don't have to be scared, Lenny. We're going to teach you the ways of the Samurai today. It's Perfect. all good. So, my Mercedes. Yeah. Um, it's been, this facelift model has been out for about a year and a half, and no one has come up yet with a nice split for it. Yeah. And in my opinion, it's the only thing that will finish it off. Yeah, you know, yeah. Lower it, big wheels, rear spoiler, blacked out a few bits. I'm happy with it. But that's front, it, it just brings the level of the car it, down, Exactly, it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, because no one has bought anything to market that I, I like, we work at Urban Automotive. You've we, some strings. We just, <laughs> yeah. So who you are, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know what it's like. <laughs> um, we've designed something and we're going to manufacture it ourselves. So I'm really excited because I've been with Urban now for nearly seven years and, um, I'm going to have an urban product in my car. You, you will do, mate. This Good. is actually, the video is about how we manufacture our parts, and Lenny's just <laughs> lucky because we're using him as part of the process. <laughs> Right, so we've landed at Freeform. I'm with my manufacturing director, Reese, and we're with Fred uh, from Freeform, and he's going to show us what we're doing here. I can already see something in this big, vast, expensive, impressive-looking booth. I haven't got a clue 
what is going to be going on. So I'm hoping Fred's going to be able to shed some light, but it all looks very interesting. Reese, do you know sort of what? Yeah, what so basically uh, Fred here is going to show us around how our, the machine recuts this. So right. this is actually our old RS4 splitter. Okay. And then we're going to remachine it to reuse the product to make your splitter. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. nice and easy. So we just talked through the process a little bit, I think, when we go through it. Are you actually going to be able to machine anything? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's all ready to go. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll get the, the datums have been set on the machine. Just need to close the doors, just have a double check on make sure everything's in the right place. Yeah, fine. Hit the gas and then uh, we'll see some dust flying and nice. um, we'll get a nice new splitter for Lenny over here. Perfect. Yeah, sounds nice. good. Yeah, right. nice. Right, so we're now ready to do what we've got to do. I mean, I assume it's one big green button that has to be pressed now. I'm sure it's a little bit more technical than that, but no, that's it. No, no. <laughs> no you've shown us up. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, tell us what we've got to do then, Fred. Well, what we're going to do, um, the machine has had all the datum loaded in, and then we can hit the gas. And it is, uh, it's not a green button, it's white. Oh, it's not, right, okay. Do you fancy pressing it, Lenny, for prosperity? Oh, prosperity? Really? Yeah, I? yeah, I reckon you got it in you. Yeah. Come on. Right, so right. if you get it loaded up, mate. Yeah, just tell me when. Now? Yeah. Is this, this one here? Yeah. Not that one! No, they're joking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got him. Yeah, it does look like This one, yeah? Yeah, There we go, I'm making my own split up. When can you stop? That's it, that's it, perfect. So you can look inside the machine now and you can see that part come down. So that's going to come down, rotate in all different directions and then machine your splitter out, Lenny. Oh, I was just doing a tool change, is it? That's it. Yeah, we're starting off with a oh, roughing so tool. The... Yeah. Yeah, so we've got like a larger roughing tool there, 50 millimetres, and it will, uh, it's going to rough away the old part. And uh, hopefully we'll get your new one emerge out of the older one. Oh wow, that's quite impressive. That's it's really quite good cool. for economical as well, isn't it? Like you, reusing the, one of our old parts to make yeah. you move it. Yeah, big sustainability drive at the minute. People are very keen to reuse old tooling blocks because it's hard to recycle. So anything that we can do like this is, is fantastic. Avoid stuff going into landfill. Yeah, yeah. Sounds really good. Because normally you start from a big brand new block, don't you? That's yeah, like yeah. glued together and then machine the whole outside of it out. So is this like one of your biggest roughing cutters, is it? Uh, that's, yeah, it's 50 mil, it's the largest one we probably use. Yeah. And uh, you can do a, sort of a five, six mil depth of cut. And yeah. uh, like I say, it's pretty fast to oh, it is fast, spin through it? it. Yeah, once it gets going. Um, and again, due to the nature of the job, it will move around a little bit in an odd manner. Whereas if it was a big square block, you'd rough it away a lot faster. But... Right, okay. Something very satisfied about it. Oh, so yeah. I'm not going to stand here for the full, <laughs> what, seven hours? You fucking are. <laughs> <laughs> that's really, that's, I mean, I've been with Urban now for like, you know, six, seven years, you know, and embarrassingly, I've never seen this process, do you know what I mean? And it's, it is really, really cool, really interesting. So, yeah, so then nice. do you have to, so when you've got our CAD design and we've given you the data over, do you have to go in manually and draw the software of where the tooling's going to go or is well, it one of them things that generates it and then you just modify it to make sure it's right? Well what we do, we'll get your uh, CAD design which is supplied by yourselves um, and then we use, uh, it's called CAM software which is yeah. computer aided uh, manufacturing or machining. Uh, it's a software that where we will put the tool paths on the job so you'll, we'll bring it into like a, a virtual space. Yeah. We'll uh, position it so where the machine can recognize it. And then uh, the guys will, will use the software to put the tool paths on. Yeah. So they'll, they'll, this will be part of it. We'll be roughing it out. And then we'll go on to the semi-finish and then the finish. Yeah, OK, no worries. So then, obviously, different cutters have different speeds as well. So the actual spindle speed and then there's traveling speed as well. So I guess you can adjust that as it's machining. Yeah, speeds and feeds are all adjusted upstairs. Yeah. Um, for this sort of thing, they're all uh, templated anyway. So, yeah. Um, yeah, we've been machining this for ages. So we have our set speeds and feeds for different through. types oh, of okay, material. So, yeah, if it's like a higher density material, you obviously slow it down. Yeah. Smaller depth of cut, whereas this is quite a lighter density one. Yeah. You can just rip through it and then... Uh, OK. Yeah. So, so what would you use the higher density PU for? S uh, similar material, similar uh, yeah, material. similar tool in, just slow it down. Okay. Or, uh, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, the bulk of what we do is the, the lighter density stuff. Yeah. Uh, for other, like pre-preg, 
carbon uh, applications we'd use like in epoxy tool in board rather than like BU. Yeah. Um, but it's it's all customer specific. So uh, yeah. Whatever they need, we'll machine. So this is the PU, so we're thinking we might be able to do the aluminium tooling for the manufacturing side of the business as well, using one of their other machines. So I think that's probably time for a couple of tea then. A couple of tea and then come back in six hours to see how we're getting on. Sounds Hopefully good. it won't be crashed. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so now we have a mould, we bring that back to HQ. Pattern. And more importantly, we get Cy involved again. We offer it against the car and just make sure that he's happy with it as well. So, you went to the pattern shop last week. I did. It's like, when you go over there, it's like you're cheating on me, doing Why? stuff like this. You were busy. I know I was busy. But this doesn't exactly form the urban range, does it? It's it doesn't. Like, this is going behind my back. It doesn't, thing. which makes it more special because my other director is like, he's a bit he's more. Well for, for it, he's, he's well up for it. He's well up for it, yeah. Well, the thing is, there's nothing, you know, I've said a couple of times now, there's nothing for this, the facelift E Class Coupe, on the market, or nothing that I think is suitable for the car anyway. So. Did you enjoy it over there? No, it's really, genuinely very, very interesting. And watching the machine do its thing and produce this. I mean, you, so, don't, you don't understand how smooth this comes no. out, do you? you know, it's so precise. This is how the pattern basically starts. I mean, we don't we don't normally go through this process. We're doing this just for the the sake of people. Of viewing, course, yeah. To show them that this is the first step when the pattern's cut. I mean, maybe we should offer things up to the car because we would see. Yeah. You're going to see exactly what it looks like, mm -hmm. albeit pink. It's not going to be pink, is it? <laughs> <laughs> this is the most exciting thing for me. What you're going to get a little badge? A little urban, like my own piece of urban on my car. The, Which is, you know, it's, that's nice for me. I can't afford a Range Rover or an Urus or a Cullinan. So, you know, I've got- Sell my, more. Yeah, okay, yeah, we'll buy get more, get more. <laughs> so, now I've seen this, we can't just stop at this. We've got to do the side skirts now. Do you think? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> um, you knew that though, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I, I did, yeah, yeah. So, I think we should pick this up and what, so place it under so we yeah, can so see if we, what it looks if we like? place it under carefully because we don't want to damage it because they've got to basically make the tool from this right do you understand the process yet yeah no i'm i'm, I'm genuinely starting to get it so this is the right, this so is obviously we, the pattern yeah, and then you need to make it right under you're probably gonna have to go right back to your wheel so this i don't know where the scribe line is but basically this will go up to the car, so if you lift so it do up I need now, to go? Yeah, so that's yeah. basically what will happen. See it going onto the car yeah. just there? It's very heavy, can we put it back down? What, what's wrong with you? You're built. <laughs> um, so this is the pattern, yeah. then it needs to go off to get a mould made. So the, basically the pattern is a replica of the part, and yeah. then we will lay carbon up over the top of this. I'll lay carbon up. Yeah, you can. I mean, you're certainly. I certainly want you to go over this. You've never been over to road, have you? Oh yeah, for a couple have of you? times. I'm not actually seen... to drop something off. <laughs> <laughs> Don't like it in the hands dirty, do I? So you'll you'll go over there and you'll lay it up for the first time and make the first part. Yeah. Thing. Well, I think our designer Damien has absolutely smashed the brief because I said. You know, at the end of the day, it's not a performance car, it's a diesel. I didn't want anything too aggressive, but I really do think there is something missing from the front end. Yeah, gotcha. Um, but this is just, you can sort of see where the, the cut line yeah, is. So obviously, cut. it's not going to be this deep. It's going to be up to about there. It's only going to be a little little thin splitter about yeah. this big that runs around there, and this like nice edge sort of goes with this design line but here. But it's just enough to finish off the bumper without being a pain for lots of speed bumps yeah. and stuff, because it is quite a low car already. Um, but yeah, and no, I'm, I'm really happy with where it, you know, the, the shape of it, how it follows the, the bumper round and then in, yeah. it just, it's just lovely. So that's the next step then. Getting, yeah, getting so the, this uh, will go for um, the, the tool to be made. And then once the tool's made, you can go over and start making your splitter. Perfect. Next part of the process probably takes us about seven to 10 days to do. Mm -hmm. And so I think we'll probably be picking up on this in maybe about three or four weeks. Yeah, cool. So now we've got the mould sorted. Pattern, Lenny. <laughs> we can now make a prototype. Now it's starting to get a bit more real. We've got the prototype splitter. We offer it against the car with Magic Mike in the workshop, ready to sign it off.
Right, everyone, it is a very, very exciting day. The journey of me getting my own urban park continues. And we've just received this back from our manufacturing centre. You say centre? That sounds cool, doesn't it? I like to call it a department. Oh, but, manufacturing you know. department. Yeah, OK. So I'm with Magic Mike. Um, and we're going to just place this up against the car just to make sure that it fits OK. So, Mike? Looks spot on to me. So, though. this was um, taken from the mould of the RS4, wasn't it? So, it's a little bit longer on the sides. Yes, yeah, so what we did, we used the pattern block off the RS4, yeah. retooled that, and then made this out of that. So, this needs trimming down. You can see it's a little bit too long there. So, Mike has marked up where it needs to be cut, and then we've got some 3D printed end caps for the splitter. So, how will this be fitted, Mike? Uh, well, if you look at the part here, it's obviously got no holes in it at the minute, but no. what I'll do is I'll work out, I'll put the car on the ramp, work out what points I can fix to underneath there, yeah. drill the correct holes into this, and then just self tap her up into the bumper usually, because that's how we seem to fit everything else, and it works perfectly. So we're going to chop the ends off, then it's going to go through to the body shop to get lacquered. Yep, that's right. And then um, 3D printed end caps on the end. Yep. And then up, drill through, and fitted, and one happy Lenny. <laughs> Morning, everyone. No, we don't need their cameras, mate. I've got my iPhone, don't I? We're all good, look. <laughs> so it's just Saturday, so the boys are, um, in the media team aren't here today. It's just me and Magic Mike. And we've got something very exciting. Well, exciting for me. A lot of people won't care, but I've been waiting a long time for this. I've been hounding you all week, haven't I, Mike? <laughs> so here is my E-Class Coupe. 21 model year facelift split up one of one and uh yeah been lacquered by the body shop and um it's going on today so i'm very excited now we had to 3d print some end caps for it here just to finish it off look how perfect that is uh mike is what are you doing mike are you bonding them in yeah they're going to be bonded in mate yeah Man of um, man of few words, but he's just getting his stuff done. Anyway, he's, <laughs> I don't think he's a morning person, but I'm sure uh, I'm sure we're going to be all good. Anyway, excited. So that's the prototype split I fitted and signed off. Made a few little adjustments, but now it's off to the carbon fiber manufacturing to see my end result, my end splitter made from start to finish from a carbon fiber roll. I absolutely love having a modified car, but you've got to be so conscious of where you are. The slightest bumps, I mean, my, my rear tires are 25 profile. They're like rubber bands. Not only that, just getting into the manufacturing facility, I nearly beached it on the speed bump getting in. This is painful, absolutely painful. Look at that, savage. My car's dirty now. <laughs> it's, probably, it's probably a good job we're here. <laughs> did, you say we're, did you say we're making another one anyway? Because you, you might have jinxed me by saying, if you now do, that's it, go the other way. That way. Go all the way over, that's it. Go on, go back. Uh, that's it. 
Is that touching? Go on. Go on. Can I go that way now? Go on. That's it. Oh my god, it's so painful. Morning, you alright? Right, everyone, we're at our carbon fibre manufacturing facility. I'm with my operations director, Christopher. And, um, that was nice. Christopher's nicer than Chris, isn't it? So there you go, Mum, you'll be proud. <laughs> <laughs> Does she watch these? Yeah. Because she's got a little bit yeah. scary sometimes. But I'll so be in trouble. Sure if, you, if you call me Christopher, I'm in trouble. Christopher, yeah. right. So I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit impatient, aren't I? I Extremely. Am, high right. maintenance and impatient. I wouldn't say high maintenance, but as you can see, I've already had my splitter fitted because uh, Look, it's, it's on, it's there, it looks absolutely awesome. The whole idea was going to show you the process from the very beginning, concept, yeah. like design, to the mould, to the, well, the 3D scan as well, yeah. like We're everything. We're doing it all like the wrong way around. So this edit is going to be a little bit of a mix, because as you can see, I've already got it on there. But we just wanted to show you the, the manufacturing side and you know how this is all laid up and what goes on yeah. in here. Yeah, and obviously this is the finished article and here's your replacement ready for when you damage that. Like just getting in just and like out. Just getting into the building. <laughs> I, I do like the idea of having one on the shelf just in case. This is, this is in stock, ready for you. Perfect. So what is, what is this then? So this is the production mould yep. with a component that's been laid up inside it already. Okay. It's gone inside a vacuum bag and it's gone through the autoclave process. Right. So it's been cured. So in there is a raw finished part. Oh, so we've got a raw carbon, carbon splitter yeah. in there. What, which once we can go through the process and we can show what we call breaking it out from the mould, yeah. then it will need to go through trimming, pre-fitting, uh, prep, lacquer, polish, on the shelf for when you damage splitter number one. So this is actually two of two, isn't it? This isn't one of one, this is two of two. So that process there, I mean, we, you know, we pride ourselves on looking after our customers and getting their cars to them as soon as possible, but having that high quality product. Yeah. Sometimes there is a slight delay, but that process is so yeah. like... I mean, I'm looking from behind you. You're, 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 not, on, you're concentrated, but you're also looking yeah, at, oh, like, that needs to be done, that needs yeah. to be done. That needs and you can see that's just probably 10% of our production moulds. So these are all the moulds? These are all the moulds for the various products we manufacture. There's loads upstairs, there's some off-site where we use third-party partners to help us and support. Yeah. So... But I'm looking, there's, there's stuff everywhere, like yeah. literally... Organised chaos. Organised chaos. Yeah. Right. What's the next step? What are we looking at? Um, shall we... Well, wait, let's go in the freezer. Yeah? Let's, I, we've sort of done this before, yeah. but I don't... It was me when Simon was over here with me. So okay. if I talk you through the process, yeah. and then we'll capture it... Perfect. Let's do better. that. Yeah. I oh, no, I don't think so. Yes, yeah, so I don't want to repeat things, but oh, it's, oh, well, it's actually. I don't want, no, I actually thought it was going to be free. Just like it's actually. Yeah, this freezing. is like nipple freezing in here. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Cool. This would have been really nice Monday, Tuesday when it was yeah. forty degrees. Yeah. Whew. So this is where carbon start. Where well, it stays in here once it's been manufactured on a on a roll, which is what we've got here, and we've got pre-cut kits that are. Uh, ready for the laminators process. Right. So, so when along this... When, when, you, when, you, <laughs> when, you, when you last recorded this with Simon, I'm sure you were wearing hoodies, weren't you? Yeah, it was winter out there, I mean, yeah. Is it not refreshing? Is there anything else we need to know about this? Uh, so, this is how your splitter starts. Right. In fact, you want to roll. These are cut digitally. Right. But because yours is obviously early on in the stages and it's obviously low volume... Yeah. Um, ...we'll manually cut your kit out of the material. Right so that we can then laminate it. It won't go to the depths of sort of getting it ready for full scale production. So, oh. so this is what another thing I wanted to touch upon. We always, I mean, I actually had a phone call yesterday from someone with a Renault traffic. Can you make me a body kit, a one-off body kit? And it's, people don't understand the process that, that you know, that, that this has to go through, yeah. you know, and the, the cost as well. Yeah. Like, what's the average cost of like a front and rear bumper replacement? Like, well, in well, in terms of to get up and running for, for production? Yeah. Well like on our Range Rover early kits, it was a hundred grand investment for the bumpers just to be the, the one, out, one out of each So model. what I should start saying then, if someone wants an individual body kit for, the, for them, yeah. it's going to be a hundred grand plus. Yeah. Right, okay. And our, our problem is that even if we wanted to say yes to those things and people paid it, our problem is our capacity where we've got so many projects lined up yeah. that we'd be wanting to get onto the RS3 mm -hmm. or the RS28. Yeah. So they obviously will postpone that. So that's also important yeah. for our business. We actually want to invest in the right product that's got a good run rate and volume. Yeah, perfect. 
So I, I, I am realising now how high maintenance I am asking for a, um, a, a splitter just for myself. Perfect. The pain on his face, the pain. Can we get out of it now? <laughs> get out. <laughs> what are they do for it? Right, so that's where you seal and release the mould. So you have to put a, um, a product onto the mould surface so yeah. that your part doesn't stick to it. Right, OK. So you can get it out once it's cured. So the first process is that. Right. To get the mould ready and then you pre-cut a kit so that you lay the material in. Um, so we'll capture that. On. Okay. We'll get your splitter mould ready and we'll, we'll show the viewers a bit of that as well. Perfect. So we're just going to demo what is going to be done next rather than actually do it because we yes. should be sort of fully suited and, suited and booted like Doc Brown from Back to the Future for what yeah. when he's handed in. This is a this is a <laughs> So this is a release agent. So we need to put this on the mould surface that you're laminating the raw carbon onto so that when it's cured, if you didn't, it would basically bind itself onto that surface and it would stick. Oh, so this is to stop it sticking to get like yeah. Yeah. Okay. And obviously you, you seal the mould first, give it six, seven coats of release agent for the first time. Then when you've had a, had a part out of it, you just replenish that release agent as you go. So that's the release agent. You've got, you either use a brush and or a rag mm -hmm. and you're basically tipping that on and you're just going to just um, sort of flood that, flood that surface. So just as a, as a demo, is it like, like now you're making like, you like Mr. Miyagi and I'm like I'm like Daniel like oh my god I can't believe this is how we're doing it <laughs> that's fine so, you can't come in side to side again. <laughs> come on be <laughs> here so this is a roll of carbon is it this is yeah so this is the first ply, so this is the surface material that you see, that you only ever normally see once it's lacquered and sell, sell, sell. <laughs> so there's three plies of material that go into your splitter. Mm -hmm. The first visual ply, 245 gram in terms of its weight, backed up by 630 gram, two plies of, to give it a bit more strength, yeah. more strength when you catch on a um, um, So we've got a, a template here, which isn't, Full scale production, it's just to get things going there early yeah. R&D stages. So what we can do, Charlie can just give you a little bit of guidance. You can cut, cut some cut carbon. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is I'm enjoying this so much. Really? It's brilliant. I'm getting my hands dirty. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it, Charlie. Go on then, right. Right. So you go round and can yeah, round yeah. that side of him. Here's your template. Don't want to go too much. So we're only going to do half it, and then we're going to flip it. Right. I'll give you... Ooh. Magic pen. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. Just draw around that. Means you can. <laughs> so we want, this is where twill direction plays a big part. So if you cock this bit up and you've got the template wrong on the roll, it obviously it's all wrong from the very beginning. Right. I'm really concentrating now. It's really good that you're actually doing. I got a B for GCSE art. That was my best. That was my best GCSE. Everything else was D's knees. So if this doesn't if this doesn't come out right, then this is all for nothing. I've wasted everyone's time. That's a lot. Of, that's like forty pound a square meter as well. This material. Is it really? Yeah. Come on, mate. We've got a splitter to make. Carry up. Sorry. I was just doing it really, really, really precisely. And Do you exactly know what that. I want to bring up right now? You know, we, you know when we have our little chats. Right? Yeah, yeah. And you say to me. Can't we just make a splitter? You, you hate that word, don't you? Word. Just, could we just, just? Could you just, just invest a hundred hours of the business's time to make you a one of one splitter? So this was meant to be a nice positive, <laughs> like, nice, nice, nice bonded experience between me and my operations <laughs> director. But oh, no, I just, oh, look, I just shifted it, and we got. A, oh, oh look, come on, we can salvage this lot teamwork. It's because he put me off look, by yeah. being negative and horrible. There we go. There we go. Right, we've got to do it all again. Oh. <laughs> You've got to complete the job. No one wants half a splitter, do they? No. Oh, yeah. You'll have half a splitter when you've hit something. <laughs> well, you, that's, I want this that's to happen. That's probably three or four times. Well, so I come into your office pleading like that. You know that other splitter that we... Uh, that we yeah, the deal up. was only to supply you one FOC. The second yeah. one's obviously chargeable. Oh, God. That one's about, what, what, 1,200 quid plus that, something like that. I mean, you, know the, you know the prices, don't you? You know what one of one prices are like? <sighs> I assume, Cam, you're going to speed this up because otherwise this is going to be more people watching boring, this. Boring, <laughs> boring. Well, we're watching <laughs> a series documentary. <laughs> Mini series.
kind of want like um, David Attenborough like narrated over it as well. Here we have a stupid car salesman. <laughs> Trying to be practical. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah, yeah. okay, so what we saying Charlie out of 10. That's it. For Tracy. Uh, a little bit. Slow, <laughs> so eight and a half, I'll take that. I'll take that, all right. So we'll give you this material to cut first because this is uh, lighter weight, so yeah. it's not as hard. Yeah. Because you might find it a bit difficult to cut the heavier weight material. What we do? We, we, do you want Charlie just to give you a bit of a demo? Yes, please. And then you can follow up. Yeah. yeah. You, you can reorganise. Like, <laughs> it's the pen. Stuck with your fingers in the way. <laughs> Now remember, this hasn't got to be exact, exact. This is obviously bigger than the part. Yeah. So this is, there's excess material there. So anyone okay. watching, thinking, well, that's not going to be yeah. We're going to trim off this area that's actually being cut at the moment right, when it goes okay. in the mould and it's cured off. Well, that's a little less pressure then, isn't it? If yeah. I haven't got to yeah. do it completely. Right, do you want me to do the inside bit then, Charles? That's it, yeah. yeah. You do the inside bit. There you go. So you can see that that's also going to be waste. What, what so if you wanted to do your, your spoiler in carbon, let's well, say. Well, we, need, we need to talk about like, spoiler yeah. and little front bumper. Like, well, we could use that, that little like that. wastage there for making a, a okay. spoiler. Oh, perfect. We'll put it in the freezer for another day. Very good, very good. I want as little, little waste as possible because I don't want you um, trying to <laughs> invoice me for... Lenny Howley Limited. There you go. Nice hey. ending, look at that! So pleased with myself. Yeah. There we go. There we go, so then we do that two more times with, yeah. the, with the backing plies and then you've basically got six pieces there for the kit. Cool. Yeah. So shall we um, start making a third split of them? Are we going to lay this let's up? Just, let's get this, then yeah. you can see the, the next phase of the process. Perfect. Yeah. So this is um, just a small selection. It's like our area where we've got our templates for where we cut out uh, the raw material. So you've got various things obviously across the different Land Rover models, Bentayga. Here you've got, this is like a new part for a new product, which is the RSQ8 kit that we're doing. This is how the templating starts, where you uh, cover the mold surface in um, masking tape, and then obviously pull that out, and then you would apply that onto some card, and then create um, your hard copy version, basically, of that template for what Lenny was using to go around on the, um, on the raw material on the table to, to cut all the parts needed for the, um, for the kit. Um, so again, it's just a small selection, but it, again, it all starts with that human element, really, um, before we then go to digitise it and then eventually into full-scale production. So what we've got here is um, what we refer to as herringbone jigs. We're stopping people working. I keep seeing oh. people coming, trying to come in and out. Bless them. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have to do it, it's fine. <laughs> so yeah, we've got herringbone jigs here, which we didn't need when we, when Charlie obviously created your splitter for you and mm. laminated that, because it's obviously got the orientation going all the same way across yeah. the part. Mm -hmm. But where you obviously see a nice crisp line down the middle of the component, mm. this is how we create it. So we effectively have to make a sacrificial part out of the mould initially that we then obviously trim as accurately as possible so that this then sits into the mould and then creates the point where you're going to have your join and how you're going to then lay it up and you've got one that overlaps the other. Right. So we've got we herringbone jobs on the RS6 diffuser. Yeah. We've got the spoiler for the XRS, the, XRS. Defender, the light bar for the XRS, RS Audi front splitters. Mm -hmm. Um, and then spoilers for the RS Audi components as well. Okay. So it's just another level we like to go to, I mean, also it's just a bit more educational for people to understand what goes into creating that nice herringbone yeah. sort of look on a component. Cool. Right, okay. Think I've done, mate. This even reminds me of the chicken wing thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was horrible. Yeah. Oh, that was horrible. So these are nice gloves, they're blue. Those ones were like black, black and Yeah, black. yeah, aggressive looking. Yeah. Right. Well, okay, so what we need to do is we need to tack rag down the surface of the mold so that we're taking away any contaminants. That's what we're going to do next. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you want any little inclusions in your visual part, do you? No, no. So if you never want to tack rag away, mate. 
So what, what am I doing? Just 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 wipe over. Just, just, just wipe over. Like cleaning it. Like we clean the surface at home. Oh, okay. Which this you don't do. <laughs> It, just, wouldn't it be funny if I just said, yeah, that's not really a process, I've just made it up. <laughs> <laughs> that, wouldn't, that wouldn't surprise me either. I mean, for the purposes of this, that, that'll do. I guess that's like a B to C grade. I mean, you're at, you were like, you were going on break time in a minute or something. That was a little it, bit like that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Or just a bit more like that. You do a bit, yeah, so, a bit like that. So that surface is basically now going to be ready to lay some unprotected carbon onto the surface. So. Um, Charlie will get you uh, the first ply over. So what we're going to do is take off that back, off of that uh, material that protects it. So that's the sticky side. Right. That's the side that's going down onto the surface. So everything's inside out, upside down, and back to front when you're making it. There we go. So you don't want to touch that on a dirty surface or anything like that. You just want to get it straight over to the mould so you're not going to pick up anything on the way on the journey. And, and it probably looks a little bit like, oh, is that it? you just got to shove it in. you just got to place it on. Yeah. This is, don't forget, an extremely simple part compared to the majority of our designs yeah, yeah. and components. But that's how it starts. Then you've basically got to work that material in. So I think Charlie could probably just give you a little 10 second laminating <laughs> intro. Right, okay. And then you can have a go sort of after, yeah, after yeah, you've done it. There's your little badge there, oh, yeah. where Urban's going to sit. Yeah. Then you got Urban. And you need to be careful as well, because this is a woven fabric that's got resin impregnated into it that sort of binds it and holds yeah. it, gives it some stability. When you're working the material, you can overwork it, and if you're using tools when you're working it, that's when you can put distortions in. So this is, this is there's just there's probably again, a certain amount of pressure up to, yeah, yeah. to make it right. I, and I nearly went to say, yeah, this is the skilled part of the process. It's all skilled. Yeah. Every single part of it oh, is it so is. important. Charlie yeah, looks like he's, got, he's yeah. got magic fingers, Charlie has that. <laughs> so we joke about that, didn't we? About jobs when we're with Damien designing stuff. Are yeah. we going to get fingers in there and yeah. tools so in that there? Is, and that is yeah. yeah. And so you imagine as well, if this part well, had an... Yeah, yeah, carry on. If this part yeah, had yeah, a, yeah. a return on it, you'd obviously be needing to wear a head torch to see in there and stuff like that. Have you got any... Oh yeah, so we've got here like some sticks which we'd use to get into sort of tight spaces and rads and that which yeah. works the material instead of fingers all sorts of pushes and these are all made by all the guys they, they make their own tools because they know what, what they, they want to use yeah, yeah that, it's that sort of it's that sort of skill set all right is that right no. you're getting there you're, you're picking up the most that's it you've got to get right in there and make sure oh, that that, a little bit. Like in the edges look it's going to be every little place. Let's so is it in there. How long did it take to make the first one? Uh, from start to finish, probably about five hours. And you've got a debulk in between. Yeah, and that's another part of the process. Sorry, I've forgotten. Yeah, so when you're putting down each ply, you've got to put it in a bag. Is it still like 20 minutes, half hour? Yeah, about that, yeah. So, so when I was going into his office, like <laughs> every, every six hours, like. I've split it done, done yet. Like that, you boys were in here, like sweating, just sweating away. Yeah, yeah, trying to get it done. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, that's to all intents and purposes. That's the nature of this part of the process. So then, one, two, three times. Then when we say hand laid carbon, yeah, this is it. This is literally mean it. It's so freely used, though, isn't it? Yeah. I think that's where the frustration can come yeah, when I, you're I involved imagine. on this side when of the process. When you say to a customer, you know, you've got a hand laid carbon splitter. Yeah, I don't you know, know what it means. It's got a carbon splitter. Hopefully you know, now they but do. Now you can see the process and how impressive it is and how skilled these guys are. It's, it's really, really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll take this carbon off right in the bin because that's just a mess. I'll give you a five, mate. <laughs> five, right, okay. So that's eight, generous. Eight, eight and a half out of ten for cutting, five for, for hand laid carbon. So, <laughs> yeah. right, okay, I'll take that. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, another stage to the process. The carbon's been laid. Carbon's laid in there. Uh, we've now got a material which is referred to as halar or release film. So this goes over the carbon um, 
in the mould. Um, it doesn't want to go on tight, um, but it wants to be loose and mm -hmm. give the ability of obviously letting volatiles and, and breathing going on when it goes through the curing cycle. Um, so you can have a little ruffle and a little play and probably just follow the lead of Charlie again. He can just sort of show you what he would normally do. Basically, he's confident. Literally like that. Yeah, and you've just got to dig every corner, every crevice, and that's it. So it's got room to move. So when it's cooked, all the resin will be able to slightly move around there and there's a tiny bit of give in it. Yeah. Just for when it expands and cools down and moves. Again, this is another waste product, sorry, for all those like green people out there, but... Tree hugs ain't going to like this, are they? No, carbon footprint's not great. <laughs> well, it is from a visual perspective. Should you do what like, most MPs do and promise by 2050 we'll be carbon neutral? I could if I was an MP. <laughs> <laughs> because it's going to be a lie. I don't think I'm in for any sort of parliament. <laughs> um, so, yes, yeah, so that's then on. We normally then just tuck that on the back yep. and like tape it down. Mm -hmm. And then over the top of this is going to be our white breather material. That's all right, mate. That's all right. And then you'll wait. This would have been good for like three cameras, wouldn't it? Yeah. You've got one. Yeah. Today, of all the days. That's it. Right, there you go. Do you get it how you want it? So we'll get the breather. You, yeah, you yeah, copy him, right? You're making the bed. Why are you doing the bed sheets? Yeah, yeah. I'll know how to make the bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. It's the exact same process as well. That's all got to go in. Oh, right, okay. So not, not too tight, still need, leaving yeah. a bit of room for movement. Again, another waste product, sorry. But the brief is there. Got, so stop, got to stop saying that. <laughs> we, we reuse everything. Back, in, back in the earlier video, when I went through it with Simon, I explained back to the early days when I used to. Yeah. Because we couldn't afford to actually replace it all the time. Right. But it can compromise the part sometimes. It's just the nature of the process. It is what it is. It is. It is we are making electric vehicles now, though. It should offset, shouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, we are. We are doing body kits for electric vehicles. So, yeah. Uh, right. Jubbly. So we're yeah. it up. So we're we're ready to go in a vacuum bag, aren't we, Charlie? Yep. Perfect. Or oh, what did you call it? No, that's exactly what I thought it was. This one. I'm giving you a tricky job there. Oh really? Yeah. Right. Oh, okay. Right, I've done the other half already. So this all comes on a roll, you get different widths of it yeah. to suit different size jobs. We have to tack it up. Measure that out. So we need to seal one end, get the job in the bag and then seal the other end. So you're going to seal one end of the bag. Just start you off. Start, you this do. does look. Put the them in. No, it looks fiddly. There you go, you just got to run it along the edge of the bag. I don't think your OCD would cope with this. Oh, no, no, already. It would take ages. No. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be your slowest team member. You Every are. Bit. <laughs> you know no, what that means. It's it, a form of you. endearment, isn't no, it? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. We, that's fine. It's okay. And up like that. That's it. Yeah? Lovely jubbly. Yeah, there we go. Hard. That's Don't worry, Charlie, you can whip it off when you step in. He's done it before, hasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> and yet, yeah, cut ball. Yeah, and then paint that through for us, that'd be lovely. Why does it remind me of a sausage roll now? Or like a big snake on the screen or something. Yeah. yeah. So you can see how how big, much bigger this is than the job. Yeah. And because you've got to fit it around the job with, with looseness and give and space, um, because what we don't want is for this bag to have a leak or no. pop or burst, either during this process when working the bag into the job, or when you're taking it from here to the autoclave, or don't forget, when it goes in the autoclave and there's atmospheric pressure pushing into this bag, if that's bridged across a radius, that material gives, but it can then pop. And if it pops, you've then just broken the vacuum and you could you have a scrap part. So that's and then the full waste, that whole roll of carbon is, so is a waste. So all the things we've done before, then, just, yeah. 
Yeah, so, so how, like, when, obviously, you you were training, and how long have you been doing this for? Uh, about 10 years now. About 10 years yeah, now. So, you, you, that must have happened to you then. And, like, these kind of, but that's part to, of the learning, the learning process, isn't it? Yeah, the learning curve. Yeah. Eventually, yeah, it just comes second nature. Yeah. Sort of do blindfolding near enough. Yeah. What a process. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll get you another tricky job because you love doing this. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, put the valve in. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll tack up that end. Right, so that's got a. That's it. I'll clear it off. There you go. So just. That's it, yeah. Do you do it all, all yeah, along like that? All yeah. the way along, buddy. Oh, I've already, I've already messed up. Child, <laughs> child, I've already messed up. There, 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 there we go. There we go. Start there. again. You can be forgiven if you let it. This is really fiddly. So the entire end-to-end -end process probably for this job, I would say, if Charlie's saying his first part was sort of five, six hours-ish, that could come down a bit over the time you're making more and more components. You've then obviously got the process we're doing now. Yeah. Then you're getting it in the clave. So I'd say probably end-to-end to, -end to a raw product, probably about 15, 16 hours. But that's, that's just manufacturing, like take, take away Damien designing it. Yeah. The pattern. Justin having a little play with the 3D stuff, the yeah. pattern and it. Then the I mold, mean, making the, the mold. amount of man hours into one split up. Yeah, I'd say probably collectively, I bet there would be to get a one of true one of one. I bet you'd see 200 hours for the process end to end. Yeah, yeah. That you can see then why a one of one product would have to be so expensive. And now I know why you why you hate the just word. Chris, could you just make me a, a Mercedes split, please? That'd be perfect. So I'm still I'm slow again, Charlie. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm slowing slow you right down, but I just want to make sure it's... What do we do that in there? Does it start overlapping? Yeah, just squeeze it overlap. There you go. Just make sure it's all, all on, all sucked in. Look at that. That's all right, isn't it? Four, isn't there you go. I've done it before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, Charlie's put the valve in for you. Ah. Oh. Well, no, could be here too long. No. <laughs> <laughs> so again, we have to do this on every job, so reusable. Yeah. Re reusable. reusable, perfect. Um, and that's just, you've got a hole in the bag and pass that through. You've got a little back plate there, mm -hmm. so that then gets connected and to the vacuum system in the building. So then we see something happen. We're going to see the air get drawn out of this bag. Um, and then you've got to, again, it's with experience, the nature of how much to take out at once, how much to leave in, yeah. so you're working the bag and being happy with with the job for it to be ready to go in the autoclave. Every bit you can. It's so hands-on. It yeah. surprises me how hands-on yeah. it is. Yeah, we try to automate as much as we can, so if you're machining the pan, but you've then got to yeah. hand laminate a mould, hand laminate a part, you can obviously cut kits on a digital table, but yeah. the actual doing, yeah. Is that going to make crinkly noise in the game? Yeah. Listen to that. It's like rain on a tent. Yeah, like, yeah. Like when you're inside and dry, oh, it's like outside, lovely. Urban ASMR. Pop. <laughs> That's lovely. <laughs> Snap, crackle and pop. So we were talking about tools earlier as well. So oh, yeah, again. Don't spoil it for me. That's brilliant. <laughs> Sorry. So you're most impressed by that. So more handmade tools again. These are our solid carbon made by the guys, which they then use for working in the jobs through the various stages. Basically, yeah. Yeah, you just go around with each tool. Just make sure oh, it's got to be really sort of yeah. It's in every corner, every little bit of the job. So the back does its job then. Yeah. So you can do all of this on this job, and then shortly we'll put a pressure gauge on it to mm -hmm. see where it sits in terms of its vacuum level. And if you've got a leak, you've then got to Try go back over your tapes. There might be a leak through there. Um, or you might have created a leak by putting a small hole in the bag, or the roll of material might have had a piercing in it, and you so didn't realise you have to do, you have to do the job again. again. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it, you'd have to debug it, yeah. start all again if there's a hole in there. 
you really can't. I do, like, all, yeah. like, joking aside, like, and I, I do say it quite a bit, but I, I genuinely have. Like, I've, I've been here a couple of times and I've like, obviously watched the videos when you've come here, but genuinely newfound respect for what, what goes on here. Because A, I didn't realise it was so hands on, but B, like, the level of like detail and, and like, the, the, if you make one tiny little mistake, having to do that whole process again. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, no, very highly skilled, isn't it? Yeah. He pay you well. I hope he pays you well. Well, it's off of a little bit. Just off camera. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Do you think you can get away with it? Actually, he's for his commission on this part. I mean, he's going to be right, okay. Cam, I think I'll just. Hello? Hello? <laughs> yeah. So now we're bagged up and getting ready to get the job ready for the clave. Pop the gauge on, which is obviously going to tell us where we're at. And where do we want to see it at, Charlie? Have you got perfection? Long as it's not moving, yeah. that's the trick. Right, so yeah, my... a slight give, only a slight one. Yeah. But you want it basically. Are we still in. running the vacuum Sorry. when we've got the jobs in the clave? Are we still running the vacuum system in the clave as yes, well? Yes, yeah, yeah. Go in the clave and it's plugged straight into a vacuum. Yeah. And so, then it stay constant. So, so if you have got a very slight leak, you've got the vacuum system continually vacuuming, if you like, mm. if there was a leak in the job. So you have got a bit of re recovery, but it's not good practice to accept leaks being there. You know what? We're good? I think you've pulled that off. Right, so, <laughs> so this, that means this is perfect then. What I did here. It's holding up well. We'll say that. <laughs> it's holding up well. <laughs> so then that, that goes into. That goes in the autoclave. Yeah. Two and a bit hours in there. And then when it comes out, then the glory shot, break out, see what we've got, then trim it, prep it, paint it, polish it, fit it, curve it. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> but now I've got a spare, just in case. Another there spare, we go. There we go. two insurance policies Perfect. on there. Perfect, Perfect. <laughs> There's Lenny's splitter. Uh, the yeah, you've got the valve, um, so you actually want it the other way around. Right. So yeah, spin it, you want the valve fishing at the door end. Oh my God. Yeah, that's it. That's it? That's it, that's it. <laughs> Are you resting with it? With it? I, don't know how delicate, I don't know how delicate I need to be with it. Be delicate. Right. So, yeah, what we'll do, you don't want to catch it on the side, you don't want to slide it and catch it on anything. Um, and then, is there any particular, and if we just grab one lot, there you are. So that's, that's gonna that's, that's, that's gonna, gonna bake now. Yeah, we've got that so side. Go and get some food and come back in what, two hours time? We've got a few more jobs to go in there, but right. technically we could do that if we have the time. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so then we'd we close that up, shut the door, and then yeah, open Sweet. it up. That's heavy, isn't it? Yeah. So ready? Yeah. That's it, push it shut. Oh wow. So that's that. You see that? We'll see if you've got it to the door. Yeah. Then obviously it's going to have the program run, um, fill it up with pressure, hope the bag doesn't fail during that process, and then cook it. Perfect. Yeah? So we'll, we'll pull that out of the clave and then we'll take it into the breakout station um, and then we'll go through that process and we'll see the fruit of uh, your labour. Okay. So now you haven't got to be quite as delicate with it because it's, it's, it's cured and you're not going to risk any damage. Yeah. So you can take it around to the breakout area. So, just pull it apart. So it just sort of separate. So like a big snake skin, and then you can sort of... Oh, okay. Yeah. Come on, Lenny, get, get involved, get on it. I don't know how it. delicate I need to be. I don't, this is all new to me. Okay. okay. Right. right. So then we've got this, what we call breather material. Yeah. So again, that's not reusable, it goes in the bin. So that's just sort of taped and glued on. 
so you can probably. So this is just ba this is basically just being cooked, isn't it? Yeah. This is this it's is like tin foil. Like Simon with his pizza oven at home. <laughs> <laughs> So it's like layers on top of layers of different materials involved in the process. Go on, unsheath me again. Go oh, on. <laughs> <laughs> right, so now you've got to be careful because... Does that go through? Yeah, chuck it over there, throw at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> so now we should be wearing gloves, we should be wearing safety things, but right. obviously we're not going to go any further. I'll get Thomas Leave it to, to the cover pros. off. Yeah. Because now that's a cured carbon part that's sharp, that's untrimmed under there. Right. So when you take the release film off and then you start getting into breaking this out from the mould, it is where it gets a little bit dangerous. So I'll go grab Thomas to get that done and we'll, we'll pull him on set. Perfect. Okay. Safety specs. Thomas is the man. He's the man. Right. Um, so he's going to basically remove the release film and gain access to the to the mould itself. And obviously, that looks like you're splitting at the moment, doesn't it? It does, yeah. So that's the outside of the mould surface. So when he's ripped that off, he'll then turn it over and probably use some wedges and some other sort of um, tools to help get it out. Because right. what you've got to remember as well is, a carbon part, especially when it's visual, is quite delicate. Yeah. So it's quite fragile in the sense that you don't want it, when you're using tools on it mm -hmm. and trying to be a bit heavy handed to get yeah. out the mould, um, you don't want to damage the part and you don't want to damage the mould. Because under normal circumstances, once this is out, yeah. we'll go back into the re-releasing re process and that's going back in the clean room to make another one in production. Right. So if there's any up. damage to that mould, you've got to go into the repair side of things it's going to postpone they, uh, So they can be repaired then if yeah. there has been a, yeah. a little mistake or... Okay. Where is your splitter if you damage it? Not so easy. Well, like we nearly did out there, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, he's going to knife, knife through the cured resin just to basically divide the part from the mould um, and then put these sort of splitter cards in between the part and the mould surface. And it literally just breaks away like that. Yeah. It's very satisfying. Yeah, that is. This is the glory moment. This is equally the moment when it's the first part and obviously Charlie that made it, he would have been around it wanting to know what his part was like. Yeah. Is it good enough? Is there a problem? Is there any pinching? Is there any um, defects? Um, distortion in the weaves? Yeah. Stuff like that. So for someone who's been like shouted at for not being interested in like the R&D and the manufacturing process stuff, this is genuinely really impressive and interesting. Good. Like uh, it is like to see yeah. it how it how it all happens. And there's more split up. There is. So just be careful, remember it's sharp. Yeah. Here. But yeah, that's it. So what we've got here is obviously excess material where we then go back to a trim detail yeah. to make it the right shape part, the right detail there. Um, and obviously we put them, which you obviously were involved with Mike at the weekend, putting the holes into yeah. the, to the car. So just to explain as well, could you just turn that back over for us, Thomas? So you know on our other splitters where we've obviously got this closed off yeah. and then we've got that nice little 3D printed part. That's it, yeah. So what that means is that we then haven't got to put another part to the mould that bolts on the end yeah. to create this in carbon. So that makes this part a little bit more simple to make. Well, that 3D part, it just looks so neat yeah, and tidy. It looks and it just yeah. caps it off and finishes it off yeah. really lovely. Yeah, no, it does. So there you go, there's, there's splitter number two. Perfect. So now it's obviously broken out from the mould. Um, now we've got the professional involved, Thomas. Uh, we'll get it into the trim shop um, and start to trim off the excess material and make it basically car ready. Um, body shop ready. Body shop ready before yeah. it's car ready. So yeah, we'll pop that in the trim shop and you can capture some footage of uh, the process in there. Okay. So there we have it then, over 200 hours, 200 man hours. Just. Just from me approaching Chris and just saying, look, there's nothing on the market for my car. 
what's the chance of me getting a, a, a splitter for it, an urban splitter for it. And coming here, like genuinely humbled, like to see the process, it's absolutely unbelievable. So thank you to the Chris, Damien, Justin, um, all the guys here. It's, it's, it's so incredible to watch the process from start to finish. And I've finally got an urban part of my car, which I absolutely love. So yeah, absolutely awesome. Thanks, Chris. Thanks. So there you have it, that's the story of my carbon fibre front splitter. From idea to manufacturing to being on the car. I'm a proud ambassador and employee of Urban and I'm absolutely chuffed to have my own piece of Urban on my own personal car. So thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you share, like and subscribe.